I remember when I was a kid walking. Oh, you, you, oh that was close to my chest, mate. This is the Venom Diaries, where we milk Australia's deadliest snakes for their venom to create anti-venom that saves over 300 lives every single year. Welcome back to Venom Diaries for episode number four, where we are doing all things myth busting. So there's lots of myth behind snakes, um, so we're going to bust a few of them today. I've got a stack of questions from a post I put up on Instagram a few days ago, so I'm going to sort of go through and uh, see what we can bust for you. Um, it's Tuesday, so A, it's the day our Venom Diary episode goes up, and it's milking day. So I'm just going to literally milk snakes while answering your questions. Um, I'm going to start with a few of the King Browns. Uh, might even get out this big unit right here to start things off. It's literally first thing in the morning. And this is first snake of the day. All right, so the snakes are on a bit of a roster. Um, and you know, I do half of them one week, half of them the following week. And uh, this week it is death adders. All righty, so we'll start off with this big fella. Get him on the venom ball. All right, now, first question, and I've had this heaps, and I actually had a couple of fellas from one of the local quarries here at Summersby, I think the Summersby Sands quarry, Ted and Nathan hit me up about, do black snakes, as in red belly black snakes, keep away brown snakes from the property? I've heard this my entire life, and it is not true. Yes, red bellies will eat brown snakes, like as in eastern brown snakes, but brown snakes will also eat red bellies. So it all depends on who's the biggest snake of the day. They're both snake eaters. Um, so yeah, that one comes down to who is biggest and strongest on the day if they come into each other. Generally, you find red bellies around dams and creeks and so on, and brown snakes aren't always hanging around those. They will come down for a drink, but yeah, so that's, that's a really old wives tale, that one. I've heard it heaps it. You know, if you've got black snakes around, you won't have any brown snakes because they keep them at bay and they eat them all and stuff, but old wives tale, okay? Now, so I've got my phone up here. So I've literally got that question heaps. Does stomping your feet in the bush scare snakes away? So they don't have external ears like we do. So uh, we do encourage people um, when they are walking through the bush to try and make a bit of vibration because it can deter them. But some species... It won't, like if you're near a death adder that lies in ambush and relies on camouflage to maintain being hidden, it won't actually work. But a lot of species, yeah, it can. Um, I remember when I was a kid walking, whoo, you, you, walking down, whoo, that was close to my chest, mate. Walking down one of the rivers and uh, my dad was, in, was telling us to uh, make lots of noise and do this as we're pumping along. Literally, as he said that and we started doing it, a red belly just went straight across the track in front of us. So maybe it works in some situations, but I'm not going to say it works in every one because it definitely won't work with death adders, all right, because they just rely on that camouflage and that sitting still, all right. And uh, it would also depend on how warm the snakes are. Like if they've come out of where they've been camped up at night and it was a cooler night, they're not going to have a lot of energy and they're not going to want to use it. So they're probably going to sit there and try and rely on a bit of camouflage. Have a go. This guy's not even letting go. Come on, mate. Come on. Let go. Ooh. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd say that's probably more of a myth, to be, to be honest. Um, if you're going to encourage people to avoid snakes in the bush or avoid, um, you know, a potential disaster, wear long pants, wear boots. I know... I don't wear long pants in here. I get that question a lot, reason why. It's because I'm more flexible without um, long pants on and I'm very confident in my, in my handling ability. But for you guys out in the bush, just partaking activities, running around, doing bushwalking or camp and whatever, wear long pants, wear some boots. Um, I've said this in other videos before, most of our Australian snakes have got really small fangs. So jeans or long pants can be enough to deter them. I'll get this one out and I'll have a look at my phone and see what the next one is. Let go of this unit. I don't know if you've seen yesterday, I um, put up on my Instagram milking one of our, re it's probably our biggest King Brown, he's in the, old, in the, in the other collection, um, is a real red color where you notice these guys that really rich sort of a caramel 
color. Um, and that all just comes down to locality. I'm gonna switch hands here. All right, let's have a look at questions, shall we? Is it true you can identify a poisonous or venomous snake due to its color? Absolutely not, all right? Don't, I've seen, um, social media can be great. It can also be terrible because a lot of people like to put information up that actually don't know what they're talking about. And I've seen a few diagrams in the past on, you can have a bite, mate. See how uninclined a lot of snakes are actually to bite. Like, he doesn't want to waste his venom on me. Ooh, there we go. But when he goes, he goes. Have a go at that, would ya? Yeah, so that's a terrible, I've, I've heard that heaps. If the snake's black in color, automatically it's venomous. If it's brown in color, automatically it's venomous. We have plenty of black and brown color snakes in Australia. So that is definitely not a good indication. I've also seen charts and I've, I've heard it said in lots of different places. Um, if a snake's got more of a diamond shaped head, can you let go, mate? If a snake's got more of a diamond shaped head, <laughs> this, this fellow's having a real crack. If a snake's got more of a diamond shaped head, they're venomous. And if it's more of a rounded head, they're not venomous. Do not go off that, all right? Again, that's an old wives tale. <laughs> King Browns, I tell ya. So you would have seen at the start there, didn't want to bite, and now he doesn't even want to stop biting. So <laughs> I haven't had one hold on like this for a while. There we go, beauty. Yeah, so don't go off that old myth either, all right? So, got my phone up here. Can you suck the venom out and spit it? Heard this heaps, and this is again an old wives tale from back in the day with snake bite and snake bite treatment. I believe some people still try and do this today. It doesn't, you literally can't suck venom out of your arm, all right? Once it's in your lymphatic system or your blood system, that's it, there's no sucking it out. There's, you can even still buy online like suction kits for like snake bites. Um, what they say, you put it on and you pump away and it sucks it and it doesn't work. All right. So that again is an old myth. Um, all you need to do, if you think you've been bitten by a snake, you do snake bite first aid, go to a hospital. Very simple. All right. I'm going to do one more King Brown and then I'm going to get some adders out. Big death adders. I'll get this guy. You'll notice the snakes are on paper today. So every sort of couple of months or so, we do substrate changes with the snakes and we put them on paper for a little bit and then um, back to the substrate. So they don't mind, they've got nice big hide boxes. This guy's actually just shed his skin. Big snake, this one. Yeah, so definitely no sucking venom out of bites, all right. Now while he's having a chew there, I'm gonna get me phone. Heaps of people put up the same questions, which is really cool. Can you remove the stone in a cobra's head? I don't think they have a stone in their head. Can snakes choose to dry bite? They can. I've heard people say that um, that's a myth, that they, they don't choose. It's like they all envenomate. They, they don't, that doesn't always happen. All right, so that, that's a bit of an old myth, that one. <laughs> There's some funny questions on here. So this question, the saying a snake doesn't die until or after the sun sets, yes or no? Um, I'm not quite, I'm guessing that's an old wives tale that they're not technically dead till if they die till after the sun sets. Uh, that'd be a myth, mate. Do snake, do tiger snakes multiple strike and venomate multiple times? Okay, so that's a good question. A myth I've heard a lot of as well, um, especially with tiger snakes. I've heard people say this a few times, a few old bushes as well, that tiger snakes in particular always bolt bite multiple times. That's not the case at all. And tiger snakes can dry bite as well. I know of cases, um, people working with, with tiger snakes in captivity that have been bitten by them and they've been a complete dry bite. All right, so that's definitely an old wives tale. The thing is with the whole myth thing with snakes, most of these crazy yarns I hear are myths. There's a lot, obviously snakes, have been portrayed as pretty wild, dangerous animals for literally thousands of years. And, and there's been a lot of myths that go with it that people are sort of just made up or assumed, I guess, over time. Um, but now modern day science and, you know, people literally film everything. We're, we're getting more, um, more truce behind stuff, I guess. Do brown snakes chase you? Okay, so this is a really good one. 
I've had this discussion with a lot of people over the years. Like I had a lady once tell me that she was on a beach down in Victoria and she got chased for one kilometer by a brown snake. Brown snakes, I've showed this in videos before, they are probably our most defensive snake in Australia. They rear up and do these crazy strikes and carry on. It's designed to put space between you and them so they can look for an exit. But I, I completely understand why people look at that and go, oh my God, this snake's trying to attack me. It's just, they're just trying to put the fear into you. Get away from me, I'm dangerous. So they can look for that opportunity to scoot out of there. I have literally caught thousands of snakes in the bush. I have never been chased, okay? I've had plenty of Eastern Browns rear up and carry on, you know, three to five meters even, but they're not chasing. They're just trying to create space so they can boop, out of here. You would have seen in some of my videos, like most of the brown snakes I handle here are absolutely extremely defensive. They go bananas when I get them out of the enclosure, um, but they're not aggressive. It's purely defense. They're not trying to chase me. It's only to create that space so they can get away and, and, and avoid any potential conflict. All right, can I get out a big death out of here? Nice, big, red colored female. These are my favorite death adders. Look at the color of her, would you? Have a go at that. Look at the really nice dark quarter lure on the tail there. Huge venom glands. All righty, so. Boom, like so. Look how wide there. Bellies are absolutely massive. Okay, so, and watch how hard this hits. Ooh, good yield too. Really good yield. Have a go at that. Isn't it, it still blows my mind that we use venom to save human lives. It's just crazy. I pinch myself every single day that this is literally saving humans that I'll never even meet, but it's, it's so rewarding. Myth, Eastern Browns are brown. <laughs> Myth, right? The name brown snake is terrible because they're not always brown. I've got them here that are like literally almost jet black, like a gray color, red. I was talking about this in my King Brown video yesterday on Instagram, and that was like colorations variation in snakes. It's crazy, all right? So yeah, do those electronic snake deterrents work? Okay, so <laughs> this is a really good one. I've seen these things for sale in so many different places, especially online, and they're like a little solar panel disc with a post that you stick in your garden and it puts off vibration. We've literally seen, because they, they create heat, right? We've literally seen snakes curled up on top of them, basking, getting warm. So, uh, no, they don't work. I know literally snake catches right across Australia that go and remove snakes every single year out of people's backyards, curled up around those things. So that is yeah, a really good marketing deploy, I reckon. Is it true if you relocate another snake, another snake will move in within weeks? That can happen. So um, I might put it there. I'm gonna milk one more snake for you guys, but I'll, 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 I'll get to this question now. So I have heard that, you know, if you remove a snake from an area, you know, another snake will move straight back in. It's not always the case. It's definitely not a myth, but they can move back in. Um, the same snake if it wasn't relocated far enough away. And also if there's another snake near my, nearby, because usually when snakes are hanging around um, people's backyards, workplaces and so on, there's reason for it. Oh, this is a big heavy snake. There's reason for it, you know, there's a great place to camp up and hide, you know, a timber pile or sheets of tin or so, oh, she's wired. Sheets of tin or so on. There's normally a re reliable, ooh, he is quiet today. It's probably my most defensive death out of this one. Yeah, there's normally a reliable food source nearby and water. So snakes will capitalize on that. Oh, definitely. All right. Whew. We're going to finish with this one, I reckon. If you do have any more myths, put them through. Um, I'll put up a video on my Instagram today and ch chuck, chuck some comments under there and I might try and get them out to you in, in upcoming Instagram videos. Uh, thanks again for all the support of the channel. It's going berserko. Remember, tell all your mates, like, share, Ooh, subscribe. That was fast. Um, and I'll see you guys next week for episode five. And yeah, this is I'm absolutely loving this uh, YouTube, all right? It's pumping and uh, I'll see you guys very, very soon.